Hello, my name is Carlos Garcia. Um, I attend Cal Poly Pomona and I am in Aerospace, Aerospace Structures One. And I am here to shed a little bit more clear light on torque applied to a circular member. And um, this section to me was one of the easier ones. Um, now, people, um, I'll probably say the easiest one. Other people will be like, no, come on, Mr. Garcia, you got to understand that stress and strain section was by far easier. Yeah, you know, for you, but for me, this one was really straightforward and easy. Now, before I kind of give you uh, a different way of understanding it, um, I got to kind of go through the meat potatoes of it. Now, you know, makes what it is to make you help you understand what it is I'm talking about and then to kind of push that forward to an easier way of understanding what what exactly is going on so the first and foremost um our first assumption on the whole thing is that the material itself will be homogeneous and isotropic meaning that the material will be uniform it'll be all the same and we're going to assume that um all of it will be one and like when one that or nothing will be different for the material overall the second one would be that the elasticity will, of the material would be um, where it will be able to stretch and bend but not break, given our uh, calculations. And then the last one is that um, the perpendicular plane um, would be separate from the actual member, meaning that like we're not focused on what's happening to this member as this is the torque is applied to this circular object. We want to kind of act like they're going to be connected, but we're going to just understand what's happening to the member itself when torque is applied to it. Now, torque will be applied right here, not right here, right here. I mean, right here. So it'll be turning. It'll, it can be right here turning this way, but it won't be like, you know, doing something weird on the inside we're talking about right here it's going to be turning so given that we're going to jump right into it because i don't want to take too long in this video and so first things first let me hop on to this uh whiteboard so you can kind of better visualize what i'm talking about so what am i talking about i'm talking about when a member has torque applied wow that's uh that's quite the member um it's being applied right here you know, torque is being applied and on the skin, there's a box being um, stretched out vertically. Now, ooh, I should show you. Let me do this real quick. This will give you a better way of understanding it. So I already drew on it, some of this, but okay, given that, let's see what happens when there you go. See, when torque is applied to this member, you can see that the box is being distorted. It's being contorted almost vertically. Like the width right here is being compressed and the length right here is being stretched out. And when it does that, this angle is created. It's called gamma. Why do they call it gamma? I don't know. But if you do know, Give yourself a point because that's some good knowledge to know why they call it gamma. But all I do know is that this angle right here is, is called gamma. And the second thing that's happening is another angle is being created. And let's just say this is the origin. And this is P for the original point. And this is P for the original point. And this coming out right here is the second P. And so this won't be right here. The second P. So the second angle happening is phi. Now these two angles is basically um, the meat and potatoes of understanding what is happening when torque is applied to a circular member. Um, for gamma, all it is, is is the shear strain. That's what it is. It's the shear that's telling you what the shear strain on the member is. And the shear strain is the equation is um, it'll be T R over J. Now T for torque, R for the radius, and J for the polar moment of inertia. Now the polar moment of inertia, you need to find whether it's a hollow 
piece or if it's a solid piece. There'd be two different equations for this. They're pretty simple. They're basically the same thing. It's just that hollow has a couple of extra steps to it. Now, the angle of twist is a little bit of a chunkier um, equation and it's TL over GJ. Now the pol polar moment inertia, same thing. This is the length of it. Now I'm not talking about the diameter of the circle. I'm talking about the length of the whole member. It's the torque and then the shear modulus elasticity. Now put these together and you will find the angle of twist. It's important thing to note that when you first get this answer, you're gonna get it in radians. Now, if you can understand radians and what the, what it's telling you, more power to you. You know, you're better than you're smarter than me at the moment. But if you don't understand radians, you can always just put a pi at the bottom and, and multiply it, divide it by a 180, and you'll get this thing in degrees. Now, when you get in degrees, it'll be easier to visualize. And therefore, you'll be able to understand more what's happening when torque is being applied to this member, how much it's actually twisting, you know? So though that's just two of the medias, um, the, the meat and potatoes of this concept. But what I really wanted to show and explain to you was what exactly is happening when torque is being applied and torsion is happening. So when torque is being applied to the member, torsion is created, torsion is happening, the shear stress is happening. And it just doesn't affect the, this area, it just doesn't affect the skin of the member. It affects the whole member. Now, when torque is applied to the member, it distributes evenly. It goes all the way around from the outside to the end like that, around. And then you go a little bit more in and it does the same thing. And it's much like a tornado or a hurricane. That's the best way I can come up that explains it best for me. And, um, you know, you'll be hit with trick questions later um, in the class. Like you'll ask, somebody will ask you, or, you know, whether in the industry too, they'll ask you like, well, what kind of shear stress is happening at the center of the member? You know, and you always want to be on your toes. And that's why thinking about this like a hurricane is the best way of thinking about it. Because um, what happens at the eye of the storm of a hurricane or tornado? Nothing, nothing happens. It's, almost, it's perfect tranquility in the middle of the storm. And if you knew that already, that's a point. Give yourself a point for that one. Because I didn't know that until I looked it up. So... If there's nothing happening right here in the middle, if there's zero strength, um, sheer stress happening, then what does that say about the outside at the furthest point, one thousandth of an inch right here? Well, that means it has the highest sheer stress of the whole member. Now you're like, wait, wait, but why? Well, it's because the radius, which how this shear stress is um, um, calculated, has a big effect on that. So if you have the radius coming out to be 0.1, this is going to be a small number. If you have a 0.2, it's going to be actually bigger than that number. And then, you know, you come all the way to the end and the, and the end is one, you know, and there, now you got a bigger number compared to the middle where it is so small so that's a good way of thinking about what is what sheer stress is happening from the outside to the inside um now what does that also say that also says that the middle doesn't really turn it's not really twisting it's not really affected as much compared to the outer skin um and now before I leave you, I want to also explain the polar moment of inertia. Now, the polar moment of inertia can be applied to a hollow piece because that's, that happens in the world. There's circular members that are hollow and there's solid pieces. Now, 
honestly, they're just the same exact um, equation. It's just the hollow piece has a little bit extra more steps to it. Now, for the solid piece, it's just pi over 2, the radius to the fourth power. It's like a vol. It's like a vo oops. It's like a volume equation to where the hollow piece is the exact same thing. Whoops. And it, the only difference is that the radius is broken up from the outside piece to the fourth power minus the inside piece to the fourth power. That's the only difference between the two. Um, yes, the hollow piece is a little chunkier. It looks a little more scarier. But, you know, uh, after the first try, after the second try, it you kind of understand it. It's the same thing almost. Um, given that, the last piece maybe to um, break down would be, oh, well, Mr. Garcia, don't you know that there's not only members that have um, one uh, torque applied to it? And you're exactly correct. That is true. Because there is members, circular members within the mechanical industry that have tons of different types of torques maybe not tons but you know, get my point it has more than one and especially in a car think about it when the belts when the serpentine bell when the um what's it called when the the coolant bell for the ac when the um not the radiator when the well, anyways, you get my point. There's multiple belts on a car where everything's spinning. They each have different amounts of torque on it. Now, how, what would you do for this? Now, it's pretty much it's it's pretty much the same thing as these equations, except you got a little summation bar before them. That's all. You got a little bit of summation bar, and so you calculate this one right here, then you calculate this one right here, and then you calculate this one right here, and you add them together. And you get your total. Now it's you always make a note if they're all coming in this if they're all rotating the same direction. Because if they're not rotating the same direction, then you got to start instead of adding, it's subtracting. Now, I know I went through this really quick, and I hope with this little mini explanation that you were able to gain a quick um, understanding, almost like a almost like a torque on circular mate um circular members for dummies explanation in five to ten minutes i hope you got I maybe mean, you know i hope you gain something from this and i hope it helps without further ado if you guys do want to join me i'll be back probably next week to show you what i go through every week um doing aerospace structures homework um it's gonna it'll probably bring a laugh out of you i hope it does because that's what it'll be made for Given that, I'm off on my own. I have to go do some more homework. And you have a good night.